Welcome back. It's been eight long months, even though you probably don't know that because the uh, videos are so far behind. We are time traveling here. Um, <laughs> we're just currently driving around from Townsville Breakwater Marina to Ross Haven to haul out and give the power some love. We've got brought half the barrier reef with us on the hull. Yeah, so I've been up here for the last two, three weeks. I drove up in Michael's car while he stayed and worked and was my sugar daddy for a few weeks. And now we're off to the fun job, which is hauling out in the tropics. It is spring, so it's not too hot yet. And we've timed it perfectly. It's gonna be windy the whole time we're in here, basically. Should keep the midges away, because apparently they're pretty bad here. All right, let's take it back just a couple of weeks. Back in Townsville, baby. So excited to get back to the boat. A little bit nervous about what's actually waiting for me in terms of boat work and seeing the condition of the boat. The ceremonious turning off of the engine. That was a bit of a long drive, that one. The last episode, we probably left you at Hingenbrook Island, which is literally like eight months ago now. It's been a bit of a spin out. We've put the cameras down, given us a bit of a break. We had a lot going on uh, with family and, um, and work and leaving the boat for a bit. It's so weird picking up the boat keys. It has been so long. It feels so good to be back. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this moment for weeks. I uh, had like five days coming up here and I was just so excited about getting back to the boat that like it was a pretty rushed drive. Trying to catch up with friends, but also trying not to like dawdle and, and turn a four day road trip into like a four week road trip, which I could easily do. Anyway, really good. G'day, how are you? That is incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot believe they are still on the boat. That is wild. Oh wow, it's not even that bad. Not bad at all. So, I actually left these covers on. I was planning to come back to the boat and if it was gonna get really like, you know, cyclonic, I was gonna get them to come and take these covers off. Honestly, cannot believe these are still hanging here. That is crazy. The fenders look like shit. <laughs> as expected. They were black. They're now light grey. And the thing I cannot believe that is still there, I totally forgot about that container and dive weight, which I put over the anchor hole because we took the anchor winch out. And I just put it there temporarily and I completely forgot about it and somehow it hasn't blown away. They're far out. She needs a clean, but geez. It's pretty good. So the marina were actually great. They came and checked on it a couple of times for us. And they even managed to shut the door properly, which a lot of people have a lot of trouble with. So um much appreciated. I cannot describe how good this feels. I mean, this is the longest we've ever been off for power. So to be back and uh, stepping on board is amazing. Let's hope for no surprises, dry bilges and uh, no rodents. <laughs> Cause there's heaps of food on this boat still. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, amazing. Well, straight away, it looks bloody good. It is like so dry in here and there's no mold that I can see yet. And we forgot to take those in. Like, it was a bit of a rush departure, to be honest. Um, I was planning to spend a little bit of time here. Michael had left, I was gonna stay longer. And then um, I just sort of ran out of time. And then Michael's dad got sick, so scooter off left a lot more stuff on the boat than i would have liked to but uh all in all like wow this is amazing this is so good the hatches are a bit sticky but um far out immaculate if i can say so myself 
Like there is just no mold, not even in the usual spots where we get like a little bit of mildew, not mold, but a little bit of mildew. Last is our bedroom, which looks so good. So one of the things that we always do is like lift the mattresses up give them a good spray with like Glen 20, wipe any like moisture out, dry it completely. And I actually stuck the fans under there for like three days to really give it a good airing. I'm going to get some power back on the boat. Just give the batteries a bit of a visual inspection just to check that like nothing funky's going on. like. All the cables good. I didn't disconnect any of that stuff. Should have lights now. Excellent. Current situation. Bomber's gone off on board. Oh, shit everywhere. Right. Going to get the fridge hooked up and everything else that I need to live. So this is one of our fuse boxes, and um, we just popped all the fuses out to give it some sort of protection in the event of a lightning strike. Mm. Fridge freezer, it's 10, it's three for the gas monitor. Freezer action, good to go. Oh, I just remembered my kombucha. Oh, oh dear. I thought it might just dehydrate itself, but uh, looks like it's cooked. At least it's opening the through holes. Always the scariest thing. So I'm going to keep these bungs on hand just in case like the handle snaps or anything, because what happens, you can actually get electrolysis. Apparently the ball valves can corrode out on them. So, um, cause it's been sitting here for so long. I'm definitely a little bit nervous. Solid. Okay, we got one open. Yeah, that's it. That was pretty easy, actually. I'm surprised and concerned that it was that easy. But I have a big day of cleaning tomorrow. Um, there's like a lot of bugs and just dust and stuff around. So give the boat really be clean tomorrow. Vacuum everything and uh, and then just do a bit of nesting and general tidying. And um, then I will eventually start the engines make some water to see um like that everything's running but besides that like the boat is in really good condition and i'm hesitant to say that because um boats being boats so much can happen anyway i think my uber eats is here i'm gonna eat some thai food and chill out the next few weeks were filled with me working like crazy to get the boat back together with general maintenance and ordering parts for all the things that had degraded due to lack of use like seals, filters, and fuel. Michael would be joining me shortly, and we wanted to get her straight around to the boatyard to tackle the oyster leaves on our hearts. At the top of my list, and something I was having a bit of trouble with were the engines. There's oysters beside your boat. Do you have enough room in your boat? Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> I had to abort mission there because there were so many kids on my boat. Um, it got way too hectic. And then I was like, no, the kids are fine. Like they're all boat kids, you know, I'm probably being pedantic. Their parents are there. They're not <laughs> like, don't chill. Don't stress about these kids being on the tender. And then one of them fell in the frigging water. So I just canned it and <laughs> it was too exciting for them. So I'm going to just leave that and wait for these kids to disappear and deal with it tomorrow because I don't want any kids drowning. This is what we're doing. Here's the carby. That's the screw. When I back that off, all the fuel's gonna ooze out into this rag. So the point is to just sort of clear that out of any bad fuel that might be in there. I'm actually just turning that with my finger. I've got to be just about the luckiest person today. I had a phone call and as I was talking to him, I was pulling the, the rag out to put a, a dry bit into the engine and uh, I pulled the screw completely out of the car view and it flung out, hit the flywheel back into the engine. Uh, <laughs> it would have been really shit if I dropped that. Anyway, tweezers, very important piece on a boat with the toolkit, 
We have so many pairs of these <laughs> that are rusty, but uh, honestly, like, I'm so lucky. It fell back in here. It took me ages to see it. That would have been a disaster. I'm gonna put the camera down so I don't drop it again. Oh, so lucky. <laughs> so, so lucky. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing, I'm just gonna take this uh, fuel filter off. So basically you just track where the uh, fuel hose comes in and then that comes straight into the fuel filter before it goes into the carby. So I've just undone that. Luckily, it doesn't have to come the entire way off to take this out. And then you've just got a couple of clips here. I'm gonna take those clips off, give the fuel a pump using the uh, bulb and see if I can flush out. See how we go. I just need this little confidence boost to tackle the other two motors. That feels so good. I'm gonna let that run for a bit. That one has to go for a little hoon, I think. Are you ready? Alright, I've had a second win for today which is bloody excellent, feeling very good. Got this engine down and running just then. My neighbor came over to give me money for the fuel. While I was here, I was like, quick, can you pull this so I can get this engine down? And I did, and it worked, and I'm really freaking happy, so. It's amazing how much we've forgotten. Um, okay, well, new filter's on. I'm gonna back the high pressure pump off. And let's see how funky this brine order is that comes out. So that's how we've done that correctly. Yeah, probably. Oh, yucky. There is a leak there. Oh, water makers, the bane of our existence. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Constant issues, so it's really difficult to put this valve on and line it up with the hose without turning back on the thread tape and just getting a good seal so i'm going to take it off again and just put as much thread tape that i can possibly fit on this fitting wind it up and then just try and try and line this fitting up the leak isn't out of this hose it's out of the fitting that this hose is on We've got to put this hose on as we turn the fitting. So if anyone's got a trick, much appreciated. All right, water everywhere. It's our water alarm for anyone interested. Bunnings, $10. Fantastic buy. This is battery operated, you just chuck them all over the boat anywhere you might get a leak. Okay, well, I have an ongoing issue with my GoPro, so I apologise. I'm probably going to get 10 seconds in and it's going to cut out. I went and bought a new battery, still having issues. So my plan was to just run the water maker and make sure it was all good. We were a little bit concerned about the water membrane um, just being on the hard uh, being dried out for so long. So um, I ran the water maker and everything was totally fine. However, there was a leak, so I fixed that. And then um, when I opened the, the saltwater seacock, I decided to run the tap on the kitchen sink just to make sure that uh, it was flushed out because they get real stinky. When I went to turn it on, the fuse was blown. So when I swapped it out, it blew straight away. So I got the multimeter out and tested, which I was very happy to do to trouble shoot what was wrong and I got to the switch I didn't really need to test the multimeter I'm pretty confident that's the issue so I don't know if you can see that so it's a bit corroded yeah I'm quite proud of myself a lot of phone calls to Michael thanks Michael but uh yeah it's been good it's been been a bit of a confidence boost and character building anyway I'm gonna put this in Oh, look at that. Bloody brilliant. 
excited to see what Michael thinks when he gets to the boat because I've done so much work on her. I haven't filmed a lot because like I said, I just have had this constant issue with the GoPro just going flat on me. So that's really been giving me the shits to be honest. Um, but hopefully I've solved that issue now, got new batteries and we'll go from there. We are just about to pull into Rosshaven Marine. So we've got the cameras all set up and uh yeah for the first time in the slings a little bit nervous about that wish us luck join us next episode as we haul out for power for some much needed tlc looking forward to getting the boat back in order no surprises we could do one week oyster farmers now oyster Michael. farmers yeah we get the kinner great work begin <laughs> now we're now we're going to go empty the wallet upside down in the chandlery as always, a huge thank you to our current patrons for your ongoing support. It truly means the world to us. And also to those who have grabbed some merch, thanks for repping Papau. And if you'd like to check out our range, head over to sailingpapau.com.